let's talk about the topic dimensions of class 11 so in this lesson we will come to know how to write the dimensions of several physical quantities so first of all we will write the dimensions of the physical quantities which you have already come across in your lower classes to write the dimensions we normally use mass term length term and time in some of the quantities of electricity we have to make use of the ampere and in some quantities related to heat we take the help of the kelvin k let's begin with the physical quantities which you have already come across in your class 9th the first term is distance or displacement we know that displacement is nothing but simply a length therefore we can write l t0 because here only length term is there therefore no mass term no time term therefore the dimensional formula for the displacement or distance is m0 l1 t0 dimensional formula we represent with square bracket and within the square, square bracket we write the symbol of that particular physical quantity here distance or displacement is represented by s so that's why i kept s in the square brackets now after distance it is speed or velocity So velocity is nothing but distance by time or length by time. So m0 l1 as the time term is in the denominator we have to write t to the power of minus 1. For distance the units meter and for velocity the SI unit is meter per second. Now let's talk about the next quantity that is momentum. We know that momentum is nothing but the product of mass and velocity. Therefore m 1 because 1 mass term lt minus 1. The SI unit is kz meter per second. Now acceleration. acceleration is nothing but rate of change of velocity so velocity dimension should be written in the numerator and time dimension should be written in the denominator then as there is no mass term velocity dimensions are lt minus 1 and one more t is there therefore it is lt minus 2 The SI unit is meter per second square. Now, after acceleration, let's talk about the dimensions of force. F is equal to M times A. So, here one mass term is there and acceleration is nothing but LT minus 2. Therefore, m1 l1 t minus 2 is the dimensional formula for force. Here, the SI unit is kz meter per second square. 
आर न्यूटन नाउ वी राइट द डायमेंशन फॉर वर्क डन वर्क डन डब्ल्यू इज इक्वल टू फोर्स टाइम्स डिस्प्लेसमेंट सो हियर ऑलरेडी वी हैव रिटर्न द डायमेंशनल फॉर्मूला फॉर फोर्स एंड इट शुड बी मल्टीप्लाइड बाय वन मोर लेंथ टर्म सो दिस एल बिकम्स एल टू सो एम एल टू टी माइनस टू this is the dimensional formula for work done we know that work done is written in terms of joules as a unit of work done is joule now we know that the work done and energy must have the same dimensional formula because energy is nothing but defined as energy is defined as the capacity to do work therefore energy and work done will have the same dimensional formula so it is also ml2 T minus two. Again, here also it is joule r kg meter square per second square r newton meter. That is also the SA unit of the work done. Energy, the SA units are joule. when we say the energy all energies will have the same dimension formula it may be potential energy it may be kinetic energy it may be heat energy or any form of energy now after that energy we write the power power can be defined as rate of doing work or energy supplied by time so here energy we have already written ml t ml2 t minus 2 and one more t is in the denominator therefore it should be m1 l2 t minus 3 so this is the dimensional formula for power power sa unit is joule per second or simply we write what impulse impulse is nothing but force applied for small interval of time f times t we know that force is nothing but ml t minus 2 and it should be multiplied by one more t therefore m1 L one T minus two into T to the power of one. Therefore, T minus one. If you look at the dimensional formula of momentum, M L T minus one, and the dimensional formula for impulse is also same. Therefore, it should also be having the same unit. Either we write Newton second. because it is four times time r kg meter per second this is the si unit of impulse now frequency frequency is nothing but reciprocal of time period frequency it can be represented by f r nu therefore its dimensional formula must be m0 l0 t minus 1 this is the dimensional formula of frequency it is second to the power of minus 
or we say that it is hertz. The SA unit of frequency is hertz. The spring constant, even though it's constant for that particular spring, it will have some dimensions. How do we define the Hooke's law? Tells us that force is equal to minus kx. That is, if you apply more force on any spring, the elongation that comes, the x, the elongation that comes in the spring is also directly proportional to the force. More is the force, more is the elongation. Similarly, more the force we apply, then the compression will be more. So here, this k is called the spring constant. So spring constant, the dimensional formula is nothing but force by elongation. So force, we know that it is mlt minus 2 and elongation is L. Therefore, this is the force mlt minus 2 and it should be divided by length. So that length term will be cancelled and we will get mlt minus 2 divided by L. So therefore, M1 L0 T minus 2. Some quantities you will come across in class 11th. Surface tension. The surface tension is defined as force per unit length. Now, this K, the spring constant is also force by elongation its length. Therefore, surface tension will also have M1 L0 T minus 2. There is another term that we will be defining later in the topic of properties of matter surface energy. The surface energy is also having same dimensional formula. Even though the two quantities are different, but they have the same dimension formula. The moment of inertia. The formula for moment of inertia is mass times distance square mr square. All these new terms will come to know in the topics to be discussed in class 11th. So once you read these topics, then you will come to know how to write the dimensions for it. So this is kg meter square. So here m L2 and T0. You have studied gravitation topic in class 9th. The small g is representing the acceleration due to gravity. Anyway, it is also acceleration. Therefore, M0 L T minus 2. Now, we talk about the gravitational constant, universal gravitational constant. To do this, we must know the Newton's law of universal gravitation. What it is, F is directly proportional to the product of the masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance of separation. Therefore, it is F is equal to G into M and M to by D square. Now, our aim is to get the dimensions for capital G. That is going to be F D square by M1 M2. We know the dimensional formula for F is MLT minus 2 and this D square is again length and this mass time mass is repeated 
therefore m to the power of 2. After simplifying this, we get m minus 1 L3 T minus 2. Now let's write the dimensional formula for the Planck's constant H. We know the relation energy is equal to Planck's constant times the frequency. Therefore, Planck's constant is E by nu. We know that the dimensional formula for energy is ML2 T minus 2 and this is T minus 1. If this T minus 1 goes to the top, then it becomes M L2 T minus 1. So like that, we can write the dimensions for any physical quantity if you know the formula.